Hello and welcome to my full live-in review of this 2023 Adria Altea Dart. So we're going to kick off as normal with the price, weights and measures. As you'll come to see in this review, the 2023 Adria Altea Dart is a high quality caravan with a good specification. As of May 2023, its price tag of £29,340, including on the road charges, can make it appear more expensive than its rivals. The MIRO of this caravan in its UK specification, which includes the all-inclusive pack, is 1,434 kilos, so the standard MTPLM of 1,650 kilos offers a usable payload of 216 kilos, which is way more generous than many rivals. But if that isn't good enough, the MTPLM may be upgraded to 1800 kilos, giving you a phenomenal payload of 366 kilos. My EV6 has a towing limit of 1600 kilos, so I was limited to 166 kilos of payload, which was still more than enough for my needs. The caravan is 2.3 meters wide, that's 7 foot 6 and a half, has a body length of 6.9 meters or 22 foot 8, and an overall length of 8.3 meters, that's 27 foot 3. So that's the price, weights, and measures. Now let's have a look at the exterior. So onto the exterior and as you can see the first thing you notice is this beautiful new colour scheme just like its uh, more expensive cousins the Adora and the Alpina so now we're in the silver with the blue which just it really does elevate it head and shoulders above many other caravans the looks of it are pretty stunning it takes a lot of design hints from the Estella but in a bit more detail, a bit more practical detail. Now the thing I think I love most about the exterior is this enormous matron gas locker. It is absolutely brilliant. You can fit all your clobber in there. You see I've got a large gas cylinder. You can fit two of those in there. The spare wheel goes in here for easy access if you need it. And if uh, you can even fit an aqua roll and a waste master in here. Not if you've got two gas cylinders in, but if I've got my small gas cylinder, you can fit an aqua roll and a waste master in this lovely front locker. And also you can see it's got this handle on it, so you don't need your key. You can leave it unlocked and you can leave it shut. So again, you don't have to have the key if you have it unlocked, which it just makes life that little bit easier. Now all around we have heavy duty corner steadies, which is fantastic. Uh, we've got a light on this side but be aware folks there are a couple of things to be aware of first of all there's no external socket so this is obviously down to the Altea's price point but yet yeah, no external socket so if an external socket is important to you as it is to me for charging the car that would you'd have to talk nicely to your Adria dealer see if they could fit you one and that would be an extra cost you see there is a light here for the awning but now another thing to be aware of here folks is that the fridge vents are on the awning side and where we are at the moment we do not have a mains hookup we're powered off gas if I get close you might even hear that's the gas burner so if you are not on mains and you've got your fridge running on gas you've got an awning up and people sleeping in the awning that is not good so just be aware of that and then if we take a quick look round at the back, we can see hints of the Estella styling here. I'll whiz around to the other side. And here's where all the technical gubbins takes place. The wastewater outlets, 
the freshwater inlet, the flue for the Truma heater and the emptying point for your Thetford cassette toilet. So that is a brief look at the exterior, pretty much. It is a stunning, stunning looking caravan. It really is. And finally, to round off the exterior, while our prototype model had smart alloy wheels, these have been upgraded slightly for production models, as you can now see. Shock absorbers are included in the UK spec. So that's the exterior, but what's it like to tow? Try not to be put off by the overall length of 8.3 metres, or 27 foot 3. The important thing to remember is that the Adria Altea Dart has a body width of 2.3 metres, a shade over 7 foot 6, and it's this diminutive width that makes it easier and far less intimidating to tow than you might first imagine. There is a long A-frame and an AKS hitch, which both aid with stability, as does the layout of the caravan, where you'll find the heavy appliances, such as the fridge and the oven, over the axle. For a caravan of this size, you need to be aiming for a nose weight of 100 kilos if your car can support it, and I found this easy to achieve with the caravan loaded normally. Riding on a single axle chassis, the Adria Altea Dart is easy to manoeuvre when detached from the car, which especially helps when hitching up. Shock absorbers are standard in the UK, and according to the caravanning passengers I carried on one journey, they make a huge improvement to the ride quality that you enjoy in the car, so much so that my friend is now considering fitting shock absorbers to his own caravan. The caravan's narrower width, longer length and single axle configuration all have their advantages, but they combine to create the disadvantage that this caravan is more susceptible to crosswinds at higher speeds than something that's shorter or wider. While towing during some particularly filthy weather, I had no concerns about stability, but I was certainly more than aware of the caravan on the back and it did move around slightly more than my own smaller caravan. I would recommend that you remain within the 85% towing guideline. I talk about this in a previous video, so do check it out. There's a link in the description below if you need clarification about what all these weights mean and how they can influence your caravanning. Despite the dart's size, I had no issues on the three occasions that I needed to detach the caravan when I needed to charge the car, although do be aware that it takes up two parking spaces and these need to be one in front of the other. Overall, the towed performance is fine. There are no major concerns about stability, it's easy to load effectively, but its sheer length and single axle configuration do make it susceptible to crosswinds at higher speeds. And now the bit you've all been waiting for, what's it like inside? Let's have a look at the interior. Right, so as we head in, first of all, you can see it's a two part door with no window and there is a bin on the back of the door. So uh, just let the camera adjust. Excuse me, please, Ted. The Camper Toby place, uh, placemat, the Camper Toby doormat is not included, but what is included, which is such a thoughtful touch, are coat pegs right next to the door. That is the kind of attention to detail that I absolutely love to see. So let's give you just a very quick tour of this caravan first so you can get the feel of it. So we've got the lounge obviously at the front here, super duper. I'll go down and turn around and then you can see the rest of the caravan and this is I've got to say one of the things I absolutely love about this caravan is the layout because it's it's almost a non, no compromise layout because you can see you can get all around that bed there's no shuffling there's no pushing the bed in and out we'll do the bed sizes when we do nighttime later on but what I also love about this layout is the fact that they very cleverly used these two doors to part partition the washroom to make a full-sized washroom and you can see you've got a solid door here so as you can see you can partition off the caravan if you so wish with these solid doors or if you don't you've got 
a nice open feel to the caravan. It's not chopped up like some other central washroom caravans. That I love. I love the layout of this caravan. And just one thing to mention here too, as we look at the lounge, the carpet is included. I've lifted the carpet because we're struggling with mud at the moment. We've had some heavy downpours. If you look out the window, you can see what was a nice green field is now becoming a bit muddy. So you can lift up the carpet, which is good. And we have the, the standard light gray upholstery mat there for the, for the dogs, but this is the light gray upholstery. There is a darker gray option. And honestly, folks, if this was my caravan, I think I would go for the darker gray. The light gray looks fab. And if you don't have dogs and you're very clean, you only use hard standings and you have a very strict shoes off policy in the caravan, then yep, go for the light gray. But if you're like me, you like muddy fields, you have dogs and uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. But I just think, especially these upholstered bases, which look lovely. I mean, the feel of this caravan is lovely and all this upholstery is great. But these bases, yeah, you can, they can pick up mud off your shoes. And obviously as you come in the doorway, if the dog shake or anything, that's gonna go all over that. But you can also see, speaking of upholstery, we've got these lovely upholstery with bulkheads, which add to the coziness of the caravan and obviously add to the warmth of it as well. Both the warmth, both actual warmth and um, the feeling of warmth. As we come down the front here, let's talk about sockets. We have two USBs here at the front and we have little pockets here to put your devices in, which is absolutely brilliant. There are also two USBs in a bedroom, which we'll go into at night time. And then this is, you can fold this table down and this is so, so steady. I think you could probably almost sit on this. I'm not going to, but it is as strong as anything it is so strong that fold-up table which is a delight to see and i think that is indicative of the build quality well it is indicative of the build quality of this caravan three weeks and it is so strong and rugged here is your socket for the tv an aerial point there is an aerial with this caravan so here comes one of my criticisms if you're watching tv your tv is going to be on the front there it's just not going to be so comfortable for watching TV. To me, this is not a TV caravan. This is a, oh my goodness, look at the view caravan. So that's just something to be aware of there. Now the seating I have found to be fairly comfortable. I'll be honest, I've had more comfortable caravans. Um, I feel that the seat bases could do with being maybe just one or two inches wider deeper if you like deeper away from the wall um they've obviously what well, obviously adria are trying to do here is strike a good balance and they have struck a good balance between comfort and aesthetics but because if you obviously if you extend these seats make them a little bit wider you're going to lose some floor space here so i can see why they've done it but yeah um th there's no substitute for sitting in this caravan in the dealership and uh, deciding for yourself really. Now, another small criticism of this layout, which is personal, it might not be a criticism for you, is the fact that if you like to sit at a table to eat, you have to put up the table at meal times. It's very easy to put up. The table lives in the bedroom here and it's very easy to get out and put out. So I won't bother you with that, but um yeah it's just a small level of faff that's all now continuing the theme of sockets and usbs there are further two usbs in the bedroom which we'll go into at night time there is another socket here in the kitchen which is ideal for your kettle and there is another socket here which is outside the washroom and yes it does the lead for my shaver fits so I can shave use that with my clippers in the washroom you could use it with your hair dryer and then as we're on the subject of sockets there's also another one here in the bedroom which we'll come to later at night time so we have a total of four sockets and four USBs now another thing I'd like to bring your attention to uh, is that there is no stereo in this caravan so if you want 
Music, you've got to bring your own Bluetooth speaker. There is no stereo. That's again, personal choice. I would actually rather no stereo than a cheap stereo. But again, I just wanna make you aware of that. Something else to be aware of is the heating. We're using the Truma Combi, which uh, is iNet ready with the uh, super duper control panel here. So it works off mains electricity, gas, and it does your water and your heating. I have really enjoyed the heating system because it's not too intrusive. The noise is not too intrusive, even at nighttime, but your heating outlets, this is very interesting. And um, I've had a chat with Adria about it. So you've got an outlet here down by Ted's bed, which you can isolate if you wish. You have another, you have another heating outlet here by the door, which you can close off if you wish. Then you have another one in the shower, which is slightly random, but the one in the shower you cannot close off. So that's uh, slightly odd. And then we have another one in the washroom down there. Oh my goodness, the carpet needs a sweep. Uh, so there's the one in the washroom. But this is the interesting thing, folks. There are no hot air outlets in the bedroom because what Adria has done in the bedroom and I have checked this with them, is that if you look down here, you can see there's, might just be able to see if you can see through that gap where my finger is. That's where the ducting is. And there are little holes in the ducting there for the heat to come through. So you get a very sort of gentle heat in the bedroom. In my experience, what I found is that the bedroom is slightly cooler than the living space, which is of course what you want. But the downside of this is I've found no way to isolate the heating in the bedroom. So if it's a very cold day and you want to heat the front of the caravan, but not the bedroom, there doesn't seem to be in a way to isolate the heating in the bedroom. So again, it's, it's, a, it's an innovative touch, but there are downsides and that is of course you i can't see at least i can't see a way to isolate the heating in the bedroom now let's talk a little bit about storage and storage galore storage galore everywhere and as i've mentioned in uh, the weights and measures you've got the payload to actually be able to use it now these lockers here the roof lockers there are positive catches very easy to use very good this cupboard seems a bit random because you might think, well, this opens the wrong way. Why does it open away from the caravan? But the reason being, of course, is if you look at the top of the cupboard, the, it has to open this way so that, because it can't physically open the other way, it would hit the roof. Now, of course, you might think, well, why don't they just sort of square it off here and have a raising panel instead? But of course, what you'll do there is that you will add another cut to the wood it will just lose that clean minimal aesthetic so that's the price you pay for having this very lovely clean minimal aesthetic is the fact that these cupboards here open towards the front but what i really love about these cupboards i mean mine are really messy as you can see um it's come underneath is that they are very, very well ventilated to the cabin of the caravan. So there's very good airflow through all the cupboards, which is great. You'll also notice by my mess in this is the, the dogs and outdoor cupboard. You'll also notice that they are not really very well. There's no shelves or anything. So you're going to need to get yourselves down to Ikea and get some boxes and arrange that storage as you see fit. Now in this one, so let's talk about the kitchen as well. These I find are not a good use, use of space. I would personally be getting rid of those and putting in something else. Now continuing the theme of storage here in the bedroom, two big lockers over the bed, two narrow wardrobes either side, and whoops, with the aerial in this wardrobe, I've only really got room for two jackets. But you know, 
if it is what it is. And then we have places for shoes or clothes underneath. And then of course the great thing about a fixed bed caravan is all this space under the bed. I mean, look at it. Enormous matron. Huge amount of space under the bed and easy to access as well. So yes, I've just managed to, to do that. and still want to manage to, to ruffle my beautiful, beautifully made bed there. So loads of storage, very good on storage. And crucially, you can have the empty PLM up plated to be actually able to use it. Other manufacturers take note. So now let's talk about the kitchen. And this is your standard Adria kitchen. Adria fits this kitchen to practically every motorhome and caravan that it makes. Why does it do that? Because it works, quite simply. New for the Dart, or new for the Altair, should I say, is this fold-up flap, which has been a godsend. Absolutely brilliant. And you can see UK spec, so we have a combi grill and oven. So yay for pretend chicken Kievs and pizza. Then we have more storage here. Again, there's no organization of this storage. That will be down to you to, uh, to decide how you want to organize it. I've just got all the pots and pans and things in there. And then great pull out drawer here. Very, very strong. Soft clothes au naturel. And then your cutlery and stuff go here. Ah. The soft clothes needs adjusting on that one. So yeah, um, you've got a large burner, mid burner and small burner on the gas hob. It just works. It just works. I find when I'm washing up, there is a draining board you can put over the hob, but because we're on gas, I'm leaving the kettle out. I just put a tea towel here. I just put a tea towel here and you've also got this space here. So when I'm washing up, my drying up goes there. Simple. And you've got this neat little thing here. The kitchen roll is going to have to be stored somewhere properly, but that's where you can store your vegetable brush, dishwashing stuff, dishwashing soap and stuff like that. Excellent. Opposite the kitchen, let's talk about this very large, huge and enormous fridge from Thetford. It really is the business. You can fit so much stuff in this fridge. The bottom is for all your bottles and bits and pieces because the, the, the shelves in the doors are too narrow for bottles. And yeah, you've got all this storage in the fridge. And then a really generous freezer compartment as well. I found, I found the fridge to be super, super, super efficient. And I've only had it on setting two out of five to keep things really cold. So that has been awesome. And now let's walk through to the washroom, the central washroom. And I could have tidied it up, I suppose, before we started filming, but never mind. Um, I'll just, you know, I'm not quite level here either, folks. This, this is real, this is all very real. So I'll just, just ignore my bits and pieces and everything. So this is a, a real life washroom. Um, with the mirror for the all-important hello sorry uh, great cupboard here put pieces bits and pieces and there's another cupboard under the sink uh, toilet and you can actually use this toilet oh, if I get my flannel off the door handle use that toilet even with the door closed so you don't actually have to have both of the doors open to use the loo. Uh, okay lighting in here. Uh, yeah, there's little more to say about the toilet. It's got an opaque window. Uh, it works, does the job, and does the job pretty well. Now let's talk about something that looks good, but I'm gonna pull, come out with all the usual cliches and you know, all the usual moans, I'm afraid, folks, and that is the shower compartment. It looks great. I love the hanging rail. I love the fact we've got ventilation above, a little 
uh, mini, micro, tiny, weeny, hecky above. Decent shower, flow rate is pretty rubbish, really. <laughs> the flow rate from the Truma pump, um, that's a Truma issue. Um, I found better flow rates from whale pumps. Um, it's good enough, it's fine. I've used this shower, but one thing, and all, the, all those of you who've watched a lot of my reviews are gonna be going, rolling your eyes when I say, look at all this sealant in the shower. And I don't know if you can see here, it's already starting to go. So I hate to see this. I like to see one piece shower moldings. This is not this shower molding is is in different pieces and is relying on the sealant and the sealant. I mean, be, be fair, this Karen's about a year old. It's the prototype. So, um, you know, it's not brand new out the factory. But yeah, you, you're gonna have to keep a very close eye on all that sealant in the shower. And one other thing, you've only got one drain, which is, you know, do you need more than one drain? Well, you do if you're like me and you can't get your caravan level. So it's just a small thing. But I mean, size-wise, it's great. Size-wise, it's great. As I say, the, the flow is a little bit weak and feeble and um, obviously it's gonna make your showers last longer. And I've had no issues with the hot water. I put the uh, the Truma heating on hot before I have a shower. And yeah, it's been great. It's been fine. That's my only criticism, as always, is the sealant in the shower. Got to keep a really close eye on that. So that is daytime living. Now let's just wait a few hours for nighttime living, but by the magic of editing, we can go there now. So of course the best place to start nighttime is the bed, this beautiful island bed at the back of the caravan being beautifully modeled here by Dougal. Hello Dougal. I can't tell you just how comfortable this bed is. I've slept in it for three weeks. It is divine. First things first, um, I've actually been, I'm actually prepared today. I've got my tape measure, so let's give this bed a measure. Dimensions of the main bed are extremely generous. The width is 148 centimeters, that's four foot 10, and the length is 190 centimeters, that's six foot three. It's hugely comfortable and there's plenty of space to walk around it too. And then just let me give you a tour of the top of the bed here we got two USBs on this side uh, that's where I've got my phone charger and then you've got cubby holes on either side where you can put your cup of tea or as you can see put your magazines or books at night these are the actual actually the, the bases of the wardrobe so hello there you go and then you've got reading lights here so uh, you can read at night and then the other cool thing, because this is an Adria, but this is what I want to show you folks. If you want to have the back of the bed up, you have to unplug the USBs. And then you can, and then you can raise the bed like this. So can you see, you've got, you can raise the bed there. But now the downside of that is, you now, I mean, I suppose you could just about use those USBs, but you can't reach the cubby hole anymore. So if you are sitting up, then, oh, then you can't access the cubby holes if you've pulled the back of the bed up. But that is the, the two sides are independent. So either side can be elevated or flat as you wish. So that is really cool. And then finally, as we give you, finish the tour of the, the master bedroom, we've got a TV point there. So this actually makes a better place for watching TV than the front of the caravan, in my opinion. I've had this socket moved at 90 degrees by Lead AV Caravans. That was the, the right way up. So you couldn't actually use it when it left the factory. So check that folks if you're buying one of these caravans make sure that socket has been switched around 90 degrees if not ask your dealer nicely to do it 
And then on this side of the caravan is this lovely little board here where you can put your memorabilia, hang your keys or whatever. So there's my memorabilia of a very happy evening spent with Benny, Bjorn, Agneta and Frida. So that is the main bedroom. And now we move through to the front of the caravan via the shower, which you can see I've been using as a bit of a general dumping ground, but uh, keeps it real, but also yeah, dog's towel and everything there. That shower is a really useful place just to bung bags and things during the day. Uh, so uh, here we are. And here's the front of the lounge in the evening. So great lighting. And what's cool too about these lights is that you can unclip them and move them well, you can move them like this, but you can also unclip them Oops. and you can move them. You can move them to different tracks or whatever you want to do. So they come out and you could put it in this track here if you wished, if you wanted more light under here. Uh, you could put it at the back in the bedroom because that's on tracks as well. So such a cool idea, really versatile lighting. Very cool idea there from Adria. You're probably meant to turn them off before you do that, but hey ho, I like to live dangerously. Bit of a random selection of blinds. We've got pleated concertina blinds and fly screens here, but then we've got just a regular roller blind at the front. And then we've got pleated blinds above it and beside it. And then we've got another roll of blind but this is upside down at the kitchen so <laughs> nothing bad just just a little bit random and then the next thing we need to talk about is how to make the bed here um, I'm gonna have to move Ted sorry Ted but I'm gonna have to move you mate we're gonna make up the bed which as you can see because of these upholstered bases where are the runners for the bed slats I hear you cry ha ha let me show you Right, so first of all, I'll just remove this cushion because we don't actually need it. And then if we go into this seat locker here, we have our runners for the bed slats. And what you do is you clip them on. You clip them on either side. So these are the metal bed slats that you, you just clip on. It's really simple, isn't it, Ted? It's really simple. Right, mind your head, Ted. And then you just pull this out in the time-honored fashion. And there you go, one bed base. Right, now let's play Cushion Olympics. And here we are, that wasn't too bad. So let's rate it for comfort. Yeah, not too bad at all. Obviously nowhere near as, well, not as comfortable as the front bed, but oh, it's, it's a lot more forgiving than some other caravan beds I've tried. Next thing, of course, tape measure. Let's see how big this bed is. And that is five foot three. That's 160 centimetres. Yeah, seven foot, seven foot, 212 centimetres. I think that's gonna be big enough for most people. And just before we leave the subject of nighttime, I just wanna show you the lack of annoying lights on this Thetford fridge. There is a tiny, tiny discreet little blue LED there that is really, you, you can just about see it, but you don't see it at night. Um, so are you taking note here, Dometic, how to do that properly? And here, now you might think, oh my goodness, um, that's gonna keep me awake at night. But if you turn the lights off, it does actually dim down, it's dimming down. So that is light sensitive, which is really, really cool. A massive, massive thumbs up to Adria is still dimming. That is so cool. Now, Adria can do it. Why can't 
a lot of other manufacturers do it. Really, really cool. So we've gone through some of the niggles already, but this is everybody's favorite part. What have been the breakages and failures? What's gone wrong? Those of you who've been with us for a long time might just remember way back in 2017, when I had a gorgeous Adria Adora Isonso on test, and the cable clips on the chassis failed, leaving me without road lights. Well, guess what? When I collected this caravan, the Dart, the same happened again, and the road light cable was not attached to the chassis near the A-frame. Fortunately, I spotted it in time this time, and the lovely people at Lee Davy Caravans, the Adria dealer in Kent, effected some temporary repairs for me with cable ties. But it's annoying to see that the same thing is going wrong six years later and nothing has changed. While not a breakage or failure, Lee Davy Caravans also needed to correct the orientation of the bedroom socket and set it at 90 degrees so it could actually be used. But this is for Adria to get right in the first place, this is not for their dealers to correct afterwards. But other than that, there have been no breakages or failures whatsoever, which is even more impressive of a caravan that's come straight from being pulled about for six days at the NEC with no pre-delivery inspection. That goes to show what terrific quality this caravan actually is. So let's sum up and also consider the question, who is this caravan aimed at? Adria used to be considered a slightly quirky niche brand in the UK, but recently it's built a solid and reliable reputation based on quality and contemporary styling. What's good about the Adria Altea? Its best attributes overall are its quality and attention to detail, for example, the mattress, the furniture design that allows air circulation inside the cupboards, the solid front fold-up table, the massive payload if the empty PLM is maximised, heavy-duty corner steadies, coat pegs by the door, and so on. This is no entry-level caravan. This is a luxury caravan, but with a no-frills spec. I absolutely love the layout, and the whole caravan is an uplifting and feel-good space. But what's not so good? Well, for a start, quality costs. The price is a little on the high side, but doesn't necessarily represent poor value for money. The flow from the water pump is weak and slow. Getting the table out at each meal time can be a faff if you don't want to eat off your lap. I do miss a front chest with a pull-out table. As more and more campsites install electricity meters, it's worth bearing in mind that all that interior space that needs heating and the huge fridge combined to make this an energy-hungry caravan that consumes more power than a smaller space with a compressor fridge, and there is no way to isolate the heating in the bedroom or in the shower. The shower cubicle is not one piece, which raises the possibility of water ingress in the event of sealant failure. And finally, there is no exterior socket. So who is this caravan aimed at? Well, to sum up, it just works. While the Dart sleeps four and works well for an older family, for anything longer than a weekend, you'd be wanting to put up an awning. And remember that if you have anyone sleeping outside in the awning, you need to power the fridge from a mains hookup. The Dart would thrive as a family van on a seasonal pitch. It's large enough to offer plenty of space, yet it's light and towable so that you don't need a massive tow car to tow it at the beginning and end of each season. However, its huge payload also makes this an ideal candidate for extended tours, especially heading down to warmer climes for a three-month stint in the winter. Couples could practically live in this caravan, and remember that you have the payload to enable this. The Altea is fine for occasional winter use, like a Christmas break or a week's skiing, but for extended winter breaks in colder climates, I would go for an Adora with the Alder Central Heating, or even better, the Alpina, 
with the Alder heating plus underfloor heating. Yes, there are a couple of items missing off the spec sheet, such as a stereo, but I do think that I'd actually rather pay for a decent stereo than have a cheap one fitted that sounds, well, cheap. When I moved into this caravan three weeks ago, I was a bit meh, but as I've got used to it, I've grown to absolutely love it, and I really did not want to give this caravan back. It's a bit of a shame that the Dart is so big. In fact, the only smaller Adria that's still on sale in the UK is the Action 361 LT. While the Action 391 PT is earmarked for sale in the UK, it's a similar layout to the 361 LT. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We definitely need the Action 391 PD in the UK as a smaller, more maneuverable fixed bed Adria. Go on guys, fix it for us, please. So I hope you found this review useful folks. If you did, I would be massively grateful if you would share it with your friends online, through social media or through your favorite forum. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Adria UK who have sponsored this vlog without influencing or interfering with the content. They've told me to be as honest and as open as possible because they are keen to improve their products. So a massive thank you to Adria UK who has supported the channel and sponsored this vlog. And please be assured, the contents are 100% genuine. For more information about this caravan, please do check out the Adria UK website. I shall leave a link in the description below this video, where you can also find out details of your local Adria dealer. I would implore you to go and see one of these beautiful caravans for yourself in the flesh, because there's nothing quite like experiencing the ambiance for yourself and more importantly, laying on that gorgeous bed. So do please check this out for yourself details about Adria in the description below this video. I hope you enjoyed this video folks. If you did, you know what to do. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. It just leaves me to say from Dougal, from Ted and from me, thanks for tuning in. There, what do you reckon boys? Do you like this caravan? Are you, are you excited? You, did you really, are you really animated and love this? They never smile. Dougal, people only watch for you. You could at least raise your head. Look, say, say hello, say hello, hello. You're not impressed, are you? No, Ted, stop wriggling. Ted, no, that's my, no, stop, no, stop biting me. No, that's my finger. <laughs> you smell.